we want to find the surface area of revolution about the x-axis of the linear function y equals two x plus one over the closed interval from one to three. Looking at the graph on the bottom left, here's our linear function on the closed interval from one to three. If we rotate this about the x-axis, it would give us this surface. Our goal is to find the surface area of this surface. Because this surface is a frustum of a right circular cone, we could find the surface area using this geometric formula here, but let's first find the surface area using integration, and then we'll verify it using this formula. So because we have a function of x, the surface area s is equal to two pi times the integral of r of x times the square root of the quantity one plus f prime of x squared integrated with respect to x from a to b. Where r of x is the distance between the graph of f of x and the axis of rotation, and notice how the square root in the integrand is the same square root we use to find arc length when we have a function of x. So if we pick any point on our linear function, let's just say this point here, notice how this length here would be r of x, which is the function value of two x plus one. So we know r of x equals two x plus one. And f of x is also two x plus one. So if f of x equals two x plus one, notice how f prime of x would just be two. And therefore the surface area s is equal to two pi times the integral from one to three of r of x, which we know is two x plus one, times the square root of one plus f prime of x squared, that would be two squared, integrated with respect to x. Notice how here we just have the square root of five, which is a constant. Let's go ahead and factor that out and write this as two square root five pi times the integral of two x plus one integrated with respect to x from one to three. Let's go ahead and evaluate this on the next slide. We'd have two square root five pi and now we'll find the antiderivative. The antiderivative of two x would be two times x squared divided by two plus the antiderivative of one, which is just x. Let's go ahead and simplify this. This simplifies to just x squared. So we have two square root five pi, and then we have x squared plus x. So now we'll evaluate this at three and then one and then find the difference. So when x is three, we'd have three squared plus three. And when x is one, we'd have one squared plus one. So we have two square root five pi times, here we have nine plus three, that's 12, minus, this would just be two. So we have two square root five pi times 10 and therefore the surface area would be 20 square root five pi, and this would be square units. Let's also get a decimal approximation for this. So we'd have 20 square root five times pi, so we'd have approximately 140.4963 square units. Now as I mentioned earlier, because the surface is a frustum of a right circular cone, we could also find the surface area using this formula here, where s equals two pi times r times l, where r is 
the average radius, or one-half times the quantity r sub one plus r sub two, and L will be the length of the line segment. And because it's a line segment, we can find the length using the distance formula between two points. So looking at the sketch of our line over the closed interval from one to three, this length here would be r sub one, and this length here would be r sub two. And notice how this point is the point one comma three, and this point is the point three comma seven. So we'll begin by finding r and then l, and then use our formula to find the surface area. So r is equal to one half times the quantity. Notice how the length of this radius is three units. The length of this radius is seven units. Notice how these lengths are the function values or the y coordinates of the two endpoints. So we have three plus seven, one half of ten is five. And now let's find L, the length of our segment. It would be equal to the square root of x sub two minus x sub one squared plus y sub two minus y sub one squared. So we'd have three minus one squared plus seven minus three squared so this gives us the square root of, this would be two squared or four, plus here we have four squared or 16. So we have the square root of 20. And therefore the surface area is equal to two pi times r, which is five, times l, which is square root 20, But the square root of 20 does simplify, so let's finish this on the next slide. 20 is equal to four times five, so we'd have two times pi times five times the square root of four times five. The square root of four is equal to two, so we have two pi times five times two square root five, which does give us the same result of 20 square root five pi. This is the same result that we had using integration as we see here. And again, this would be square units, which is also approximately 140.4963 square units. Just keep in mind, the only reason we can use this geometric formula for this example is because the surface is a frustum of a right circular cone. I hope you found this helpful.